Speaking from personal experience, when you've narrowed down the list of choices on what particular car you actually want to buy, the next difficult step is trying to figure out what color you want it to come in. Will it match your personality? Will it match your lifestyle? Will it hide the billions and billions of scratches you're eventually going to get from motorcycles that are zooming by at light speed? And all that jazz. But after that, it should be smooth driving, right? Eh, you'd think. Michigan's favorite son has decided to complicate things in a very good way. This is the 2023 next generation Ford Territory. And if you stick around on this episode of Behind the Wheel, I'll explain to you just exactly how. Now, it must be said that we do have a walk around of the next generation Ford Territory, which is on our YouTube page, which launched at the exact same time it was unveiled at the Manila International Auto Show. However, that was the Titanium X. This is simply the Titanium. And this is exactly how they've complicated things in a good way. Let me explain. The Titanium X comes in at 1,599,000 Philippine pesos. This Titanium comes in at over 260,000 Philippine pesos less. So with a price difference that big, the differences should be outright in your face and really glaring, right? The answer is yes and no. Let me show you. Indistinguishable up front, you've got your DRLs, your turn indicators, your headlamps, your fog lamps, and of course the very, very large grille that you find up front. And also the off-body color chin that actually accentuates its ground clearance. Mechanically, however, there is no difference. Both models get a 1.5 liter EcoBoost that produces 158 horses and 248 newton meters of torque. Mated to, well, what Ford likes to call a seven speed automatic transmission with a rotary dial. But conventional wisdom will tell you that that basically, dude, is just a seven speed DCT. So with the front clip and the engine and the transmission, it's really all square. Not to confuse you or anything, but this next generation against the previous generation, it is a little bit longer in terms of body and wheelbase, and it's ever so slightly taller. Up against the X, because this is the titanium, uh, it's almost pretty much the same really down the side. You've got roof rails up on top, chrome around the windows, repeaters on the side mirror, body cuts on the door, and identical 190 millimeters of ground clearance, as well as disc brakes front and rear. The differences lie in here. Uh, on the X, you've got puddle lamps. Here, you don't have puddle lamps, but again, you also do still have the 360 degree camera, which is very important. The wheels are also different too. These are 18s on the titanium. On the X, a little bit larger, 19s with a different pattern. And also, that X has thinner tires. These are 55. On the X, you get 50s. At the rear, it's pretty much the same, really, from titanium to X, in the sense that you have a spoiler with the third brake light. You've got sharp LED tail lamps that come into the center. That's nice. So are, too, the sequential turn signals that you have at the rear. And then you have a few garnishes found down below. The difference here at the rear is that the titanium does not have a power tailgate. The X has a power tailgate with a kick function. But if you've seen our walk around, you'll know that the space of this titanium is exactly the same as that of the X in the sense that you can definitely fit a Balik Bayan box in here with a small bag at the side and still be able to close the door. That's with the second row in play. And if you fold that, obviously you can add a little bit more Balik Bayan boxes, which by the way, if you've seen our walk around, you'll note that I made mention of Jack's bag, which was ridiculously heavy. I finally figured out what was in Jack's bag. Dirty magazines. Jack, you need to find Jesus because Jesus is definitely looking for you, dude. Now, on this particular review, it was important for me to ask Jack to put the driver's seat 
in his normal driving position because I wanted to show just exactly how much room there is in this automobile. Look at it, it is redonkulous. Like there's no tunnel obviously, but just look at the amount of space that you have in this car. It is so wild. And mind you, that's for both titanium and the X. Now, toys back here include two air vents found in the center, which is very, very good. Only one USB charging point. I wish there were more, to be honest with you. Uh, in the center, you've got a center armrest with two cup holders. And then, of course, you've got bottle holders on either side, which, if I'm not mistaken, sorry, I didn't mean to show you my bottom, uh, can carry my bottle ever so snugly it is a bit tight so my bottle will fit jack's bottle definitely a uh, no i'm gonna put that aside so that i can continue now the big difference and i do mean the big difference back here is the fact that there are leather seats inside the titanium x here in the titanium it's leather and well pleather of some sort the leather part comes in the form of this very blue beautiful perforated leather and i love it the color of this blue is actually nice reminds me of the 70s when jack used to run around in diapers um it is born yet. you were and then it's got some brown or rather gray brownish grayish i'm kind of colorblind but i know that this is a very nice jack what color is this it's wood <laughs> It's G. Thank you, Mr. Shakespeare. Wood color. Okay, so that is a big difference. The fact that uh, it's partially leather only in the titanium and full leather in the X. The other huge difference is that there is no panoramic sunroof in the titanium. However, this being the Philippines and it is the middle of summer, I am grateful that that is not glass because already in this heat, I am sweating like a... No, I can't say that. Up front, oh yeah, while we're at it, uh, normal bottle will fit in the door card, no problem, but it will have to lay down. It can't stand up because it just won't fit. Now that's for my bottle. When we're talking about Jack's bottle, which apparently is more popular than me and Jack put together, I've got a lot of fans for this guy on the internet, definitely will not fit on the door card, but will fit nicely here underneath if need be, right? So you've got that. Now, getting myself out of Jack's ridiculous driving position and into my, well, ridiculous driving position because my legs are so short, you've got a 10-way power seat adjuster which brings you that much closer to what you normally see on a lot of Chinese automobiles today, which is a full digital display that stretches from one side to the other. I quite like that. It is a 7-inch uh infotainment or rather seven inch instrument cluster here found in front of the driver and a 12 inch uh infotainment system which is actually very nice around the automobile you've got soft touch on the dash which i like very much on the steering wheel you've got buttons for your cruise and of course to control your infotainment Jack really loves this. The fact that the air controls are not integrated into the infotainment. They have their buttons, their own buttons right here, which I'm going to turn on right now. And your audio control as well. Here, you can immediately get to it. But, okay, Jack's laughing because there are a few quirks about it that we're not too happy about. Number one is that this is all piano black. So you've got fingerprints all over the place. That's the problem. Number two is that the piano black continues on the air control. So as you can see, my <laughs> fingerprints are all over this darn thing. Number four, am I at number four? Three. Or I'm number three. <laughs> at number three is that it's great that there is a volume button. Fantastic. It's great. You can turn it, but the problem is the hash marks is something that Jack and I kind of find weird because you can turn it on and off and when you get inside the car, it might be like that or it might be like that. And that just might upset a couple of OC people like Jack himself. But other than that, everything actually is pretty great inside this automobile. You've got great tech in the sense that you've got wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. Um, there, it's my Spotify. Ooh, every rose has its thorn. Um, you also have a wireless charger, a deep, deep center console here. Look at this, it's deep. It can fit more of Jack's Dirty Magazines with a tray that slides front and back. Um, and, and truthfully, that's, that's what's similar between the X and this titanium. 
in the sense of what is different well um i gotta tell you that the one thing that is really really different from that model mobile or that model and this model is that you have ventilated seats in the x and to be honest with you in the middle of summer again 260 grand is like worth it maybe not but you get what i'm trying to get at and also obviously there is a lot of tech that comes with the Titanium X. For instance, uh, in the Titanium, you do have cruise control, but in the Titanium X, you've got cruise control with adaptive capabilities. So it's additions of tech like that, and there's a slew of them that you won't find in the Titanium that you will find in the Titanium X. Additional driver aids is what I'm trying to get at. It's not all sunshine and rainbows, unfortunately, because there is one thing that I believe Ford may have, uh, it's not a fault, but really a missed opportunity, which is the fact that both models have drive modes. You have eco, normal, sport, and mountain, oddly enough. The problem is to get to it is in this manner. You actually have to go to your home button which brings you to your screen and then go to your vehicle settings and then go to vehicle safety and then I can select which particular drive mode it wants. Now you might think that that's not really a very big thing but I've found that this right here, Eco, Eco is actually extremely important to this automobile and that I would really love for you to jump into the car and I'll show you exactly why. But before we do, please give us a like on this video if you deem that we do deserve it. And also, please give us a like or a subscription rather because we create these videos just for you guys. The previous territory had a CVT. Now, that was basically geared towards more fuel efficiency. However, it can be said that it lacked a little oomph. In this next generation, it's a DCT, and that dual clutch transmission is really all about the oomph, so much so that it's a lot even in traffic. See, you'll find yourself when in traffic that when you release the brake pedal that the car moves actually quite slow. Instead of using the accelerator to slowly catch up with that momentum, when you throttle yourself, uh, it kind of jumps forward so much so that you may find yourself getting onto the brake pedal immediately. Now, I'm not saying that it's a deal breaker at all because let's face it, when you get into an automobile, there's a learning curve when you drive it, whether it be the tech and whatnot. In this case, it's you need to know how much of the accelerator you're willing to put down to properly maintain a speed without it jumping forward or having to jump on the brakes again. But it can be a little bit daunting, which is why I found that when you use the eco mode, it actually cuts that jumpiness down into half. So what I'm getting at is that although the DCT is very, shall we say, overzealous, the eco mode does well to tame it down ever so slightly. Oh, and speaking of traffic, we've actually been in a lot of it. We wanted to get out on the highway to see fuel efficiency, but we got traffic efficiency instead. Now, inside the city, at an average speed of 26 kilometers per hour, which is nothing great really, traveled over 65 kilometers now, we're doing roughly eight to eight and a half kilometers per liter, which I do believe is actually pretty good. I can only assume that when you're out on the highway, that figure should double to about 16 kilometers per liter. Dare I also say that the titanium might actually have a slight advantage in fuel efficiency up against the X, because while we don't have the exact figures, I can only assume that the titanium's curb weight is less than that of the X because, well, it just has less stuff in it, including the mechanism of a power tailgate. Sure, it's not a lot of weight, but hey, it all counts. Steering is absolutely light. I mean, it really doesn't even feel like you're working your lats at all. NVH, pretty darn good. 
can't hear any other outside noises. Even those loud motorcycles don't really come in at all. And if they do, you've got a powerful sound system to drown out any problems that you have with that. The other thing is space is nuts, as we've shown you. When Jack is in the driver's seat, I still have loads of room in the back. So if you still haven't figured out just exactly how Ford has pleasantly complicated things, let me wrap it up for you. At the end of the day, or rather at the end of this video, you'd expect me to be able to give you my personal preference when it comes to which particular one I'd get. And the truth is, I'd probably go for this, the volume mover of the territory, which is the Titanium, not the Titanium X. Currently, what stands between the two of them is 265,000 Philippine pesos. Now, with that price, you do also get what you pay for in the sense that you get a power tailgate, full leather seats, ventilated seats up front, larger tech, uh, or rather a larger infotainment, and then more driver tech and a panoramic sunroof, just to name a few. However, because the car is really put together well, you don't necessarily need it unless you really want it but then you still don't need it. But um, if you want it, but if you don't need it, then you, I, I don't know.